Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Soundboard, where me and my friend, platonic friend, Jade Spooner, sit down. <laughs> Setting the record straight. Platonic friend, Jade Spooner, sit down and talk about a bunch of different things. Today, we are talking about marketing and branding, which is pretty much our favorite type of topic. Yeah. And within business, it's for you as well, isn't 100%. it? 100%. Yeah, this is, I'm Jade for this one. Let's go. Roll the intro. Tonic Jade, what's up? What's happening? Um, yeah, we are getting a few questions and I feel like they're going to come. Just set the record straight. Set the record straight. Single guy, single girl, but does not mean we're an item, does cool. it? Cool, yeah. We're friends. Grateful, grateful. Grateful, 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 grateful for, for each other. Jade. All right, let's talk about branding and marketing. Like I said before, it's our favourite part. Why Absolutely. is it your favourite part? I just feel like it's where your business comes to life. Mm. I really feel like a lot of things are, are, are good in theory and you can sort of stew on an idea for a little while and plan it out, map it out. But once you go to market and you create that personality behind the brand, I think that's really where the life happens. And Don't you lot, agree? I agree. And a lot of the time the products always stays the same. Like yeah. we sell t-shirts, you sell an app or like a service. Um, so you've got to keep mixing it up. And one of the best things about marketing is, is having an idea, executing it and people actually spending their disposable income on yeah. your idea. 100%. As, as probably one of the most underrated feelings in the world. Yeah, and do you know what else I love about it as well? It's reflective of what your audience want as mm. well. So you're, th- you're listening to the people that are loving a brand, you're listening to the people that are buying your product, and then you're replicating your message in you know, what you do on a marketing front. That's awesome. So where do you come up with your best uh, marketing ideas, in your opinion? I've had a few on a boozy night out, <laughs> to be so honest with you. Yeah. Um, no, it's really just, I, I get a lot of ideas when I'm driving. I think it's reflective of like what state of life and mind you're in as well as, mm. a, as a founder or as like an entrepreneur. So if you're really happy all round and if you're at peace and, you know, whatnot, I think a lot of things come to you, you know, in that particular time. Exercise, I think I find a lot comes... Do you exercise. do you allocate time to thinking time about this type of stuff? Not or really. Is it not really. I just let it yeah. organically come. But in saying that as well, like now that our company is a little bit larger, I think that you need to be quite regimented in your deliverables. So you need to have a marketing plan that's sort of like, you know, quarterly rather than, you know, the week ahead of time or the <laughs> yeah. week of or whatnot. I think we're still learning that. Yeah, but you know what? Some things are really good straight off the bat. Mm. But I think when it comes to planning and when you think about like, you know, even for you guys like seasonally and, and making orders and – you know, moving with, I mean, the amount of demand that you require to make the orders to to cater for that, there needs to be an element of planning. So sometimes you can do things straight off the bat, but you also need to have like a marketing plan and strategy in place as well. Yeah, agree. And we're sort of building towards that now where we kind of know what we're dropping like six months from now. So we kind of like maybe two months out or a month out, we start to put a strategy together on how we can market this best. Yeah. So what, what, what marketing really works for Equolution? I think, look, drawing back to when we even just had no money and had to rely on organic alone, so organic is unpaid. Um, So when we had to just rely on organic alone, I think just the general, like the influencer um, marketing strategy, so just giving your product to influencers, we never have had regulations around it or anything like that. We just sort of said to, to people that we really vibed with, you know, we've got this product, it's super cool, like a great service. Um, you know, you can diet according to the needs of your body and you can lose weight or, you know, stay the same, whatever your goal is. Um, if you want to post about it, you can post about it. If you don't, you don't have to. Mm. And that really worked for us. That that scaled the message, you know. So you're, you have to remember as a founder or as a team, you're only a few people. So you need to get your product in front of the eyes of so many more people um, in a way that's like, it's pretty organic. It doesn't look paid. Yeah. I think that's the most genuine way to do it. It's really good advice. Um, why do you think people are so scared of marketing? I think because they think they have to put a lot of money into it. Don't you? I think that people think of marketing, they're like, oh, budget. TV ads? Do, they, do you reckon they think TV ads? When I think they think, they think traditional marketing, things like newspapers, ads, and that or that automatically alludes to, oh, I've got to know someone to get a foot in that door, mm. which is true to a certain extent. Um, but I mean, you've just got to think, if you want to go down that avenue, the way that we did it organically was we just became newsworthy. So we were posting things on Instagram. Were you chasing PR or did it come naturally? It came quite naturally, but in saying that as well, I sometimes bounce in, you know, the emails and whatnot of like my daily mail contacts or yeah. or Channel 7 or something like that about particular segments that I think are, are newsworthy or I, th- I think people might enjoy on a nutrition front. Um, so just keeping – and one thing that you guys do really well, which I think is a really good piece of advice on a marketing front, is be consistent. 
consistent, mm. you know, in your content and in, I guess, what you put out there. Because the moment that you stop putting content out there or you stop speaking to your audience is when you lose, like, the first front of their mind type Oh, thing. it's so important. Mm. And because the world moves so much quicker now, especially for Instagram, yeah. people aren't on there for too long. So you need to capture them pretty quick and move them through a funnel. But all right, we've got a few key points that we're going to touch on. Mm. That's not even the start of it as well. Oh, so God, we could just go for days <laughs> on this topic, couldn't we? Uh, creating a brand, how important is it? It's very important. The way. So, sorry, sorry. First of all, what is brand? So branding, I would say, is like the vocals of your company. Mm. So if your if your company had a personality, if it could speak, who would it be and what would it say? That's the way I consider a brand. Mm. So I even do it with like. So we've got a number of different platforms, right? So we, um, you know, as Equolution, we speak on Facebook, we speak on Instagram. We've got a main page, we've got a team page. All of our girls have their own um, accounts as well, so cool. they have their own presence. Yeah. Um, and I even say, you know, to divide the content and see what fits what. If you could speak as that platform, what would you say and who are you trying to say it to? And that's brand to you? I think so, yeah. yeah. That makes sense. I see it as kind of like what people say when you're not around. Oh, that's a really good way of putting it. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yep. So what do you reckon they say about Equalution when you're not around? Um, I think we've really captured the market with the 80% whole food, 20% soul food kind of, um, you, you know, like that message, I think. Yep. So that would be the message. And then I think, you know, just having your cake and eating it to um, enjoy the foods you love, lose weight, all that kind of stuff. I think yeah. that's the general ideal around our service. So you said three things right there, quite catchy punchlines. Are those uh, important for marketing? Yeah, I think so too. And that, I think that draws back to my good old Google days. <laughs> because when I used to sell ad space for brands, that's yep. something that I used to help them sort of come up with. Like, you key know, points, yeah. Key points. Because I used to have really, some businesses aren't that sexy. So like, for example, you might have like a concreter or something like that. And mm. it's really hard to market and have a point of difference. So then you want to kind of fall back on the things that do appeal to people, you know, fast, um, affordable, you know, efficient, come, we drive to you, all that kind of stuff. Like, you know what I mean? Mm. So I think you, you have to kind of be thinking about your audience when you're creating that message. What would really tap into the minds of people and think, Fuck, I need to get on board with that. And I feel like those short catchy phases are really good. So like I'll put out like a lot of tweets and mm. they're only really one sentences and then my highest performing content. So I think in that age that we move so quick now, those little things are really important. Even yeah. when you train, you're like ask the grass, like, you I'm, know, get low on the squat. Yeah, and so even little things, I noticed that you guys do it really well, like catchy things like the gratefuls and, mm. and Billy Goat of the Week and all that, like stuff that sticks that people carry through in their like friendship groups and within the community as well. Mm. Um, so yeah, we'll still talk about creating brands. So you, do you reckon it's important to identify who you are before you even launch into business? Yeah, I think so. I think so. Or does that come over time? I mean, there are brands that evolve and I think every brand evolves in a certain way, but some sort of do it, I guess, um, more so than others. Like some people are who they are from day dot and then some people either evolve with the times or evolve with their own growth or um, ad adapt to like just general culture and all that kind of stuff. But for the most part, I think it's really important to ask what you want out of one, your product or service, reaching people, and two, what you want as a business owner at, from the get-go. Mm. Because if you think about, you know, really renowned brands, um, like, you know, one of our competitors, for example, is um, 28 by Sam Wood. Um, so he does, like, the the workout programs and whatnot. Cool. And they're by Sam Wood. So he's now forever the face of 28 by Sam Wood. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Until is they, that a good, th good or bad thing? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I think you need to consider it when you first, you know, launch into business. Amal and I weren't really sure in terms of being the face of the company, whether that was something that we want. So we kind of gave Equolution its own personality. Yeah. And I think that's I think that's and good. you position out to sell out to later. Yeah, right? that's what I was going to yeah. say. So, yeah, but yeah you, so if you're going to look to sell mm. down the track, then that would be a consideration you'd have at the start. Uh, I feel like human, because uh, I've come from a different model as well. Like my, yeah. we started, y, I started, oh, we started YKTR because I just didn't want to work for anyone else. Yeah. And then I think over time we built our yeah. sort of mission yeah. statement. Like I didn't even know what a mission statement was. Yeah. But do you guys have a mission statement? Yeah, obviously? we do. What's yours? Oh, Jesus. It's um, <laughs> uh, to change, it's something along the lines of changing bodies, minds and lives um, worldwide using a balanced approach to nutrition and bettering relationships with food. It's something along those lines. It's, Is that long? It's, Is that a bit long? It, it, no? It's meant to be just like a little black like, paraphrase type yeah. thing. You never really say it, but it's good for company culture and for, you know, you as founders and your team to know what you stand for. Yeah. So I think like some really important questions to ask is like, is who are we? And I know that sounds like really simple, but like when you think of YKTR, you could probably straight off the bat say you know who, who are we and what mm. why are we here mm. um i feel like i like if 
we don't have them really written down or anything, but I do know them, like what our mission statement is yeah. and kind of what we stand for. Yeah. And if someone pulls me up on a podcast, I'm like, yeah, this is it. So like I remember for us, it started on like with passion points. Like we really wanted to give people results. We really wanted to do it in a way that was healthy and balanced mm. and they enjoyed the foods that they loved. And we wanted to make sure that they had a friendship with food. So like, that's kind of like what we stood for at the start. And then in terms of like the, who are we? Um, what do we do? You need to define your your service as well. Yeah. So that was one thing I found tricky. And it does it does like you do feel like a lot clearer with it as well. Yep. Once you do have those in place in place, where I was just like, oh, I just like I just want to fucking start a business and yeah, not work yeah. for anyone. And those evolved over time. But once you've got them in place, it's kind of like someone rocks up to your um, business and you're like, this is what we stand for. Yep. This is what we're about. This is what we do. It definitely makes it a lot easier, doesn't it? So true. And I I remember one of the most difficult challenges that we had in our marketing message was we had a really complex service. So essentially, like we're all in app. So it's a pocket nutrition coach but it was we found it really hard to communicate because it was like a scientific kind of algorithm and whatnot that people's calories and macronutrients are calculated then they're provided to them so they can self-select their own food and then they get a meal plan do you see do, that? yeah do people care about the scientific side of it in terms of like marketing or do you sign like if you, like, I feel like you couldn't really explain that super clearly, and you you've been trying seven short. years. Yeah. So ev- anything you do in marketing, it needs to be catchy. Mm. Like think of the word catchphrase. Yeah. It's ca- it's catchy. And so you just condense. And like you said that really really well because when you're driving past on a billboard, you don't have time to sit. You don't have time to go <laughs> science <laughs> based <laughs> constructed. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. So for us, we just ended up we rested on the term science based. Yeah. And then that's just what we stick with. And if anyone wants to inquire and ask further questions, you got then, a page there. Yeah. Then yeah. They, they've got the you know the avenues to be able to do that. All right. So you're creating a band. You understand who you are, what you stand for, what your mission is. Last part is goals as well. It's important for every business to have a bit of a goal and everything they're about. Yeah, definitely. Because I think even like you know, even if you think about a goal of international expansion, then Mm. when you're branding and when you're marketing, you need to make sure that you're diverse and universal in your message, that it can adapt to different cultures if you were to go international and stuff like that. So it's really important sort of to somewhat think about the end goal and like the different interim processes that you might have as a company when you're branding. What's a good goal for a startup? (sighs) Is it it always money? Money goals are important, but... I feel like if you just have a money goal, you're not going to get there. You need yeah. the, all that other stuff that sort of aligns with it's it as depen- well. It's it's really dependent on the startup because, I mean, there's some startups that are in like like the charitable space where mm. their goal is just to – there might be government funded or something like that or non-for-profit and they just want to reach X amount of people or something like that. So I think it's really relative to the actual business. But anything that's quantifiable – is usually a good goal, you know, reach X people, reach X revenue, um, have X staff that, you know, to create a culture or something like that. I think they're they're good measures. All right, you've talked about quick catchphrases. How do you sum up branding or everything we've touched on that people can sort of just vibe off straight away, like a couple key points? I think a couple key points is if your company could speak, what would it say? The personality, and as you said as well, I think that was a really good message about, you know, if you weren't in the room, what would people say about your company, your brand. Reputation. Brand's just reputation, yeah, it isn't is, it? It yeah. is, it is. And also just... Um, it's fucking so important as well. Like, we've sort of brushed over it as well. And I always say, I build brand over everything. Yep. Um, and it, there's a lot of times I sacrifice money to build brand. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So, and do you know something else that I noticed that you do... Um, We've had similar things in our space, but probably haven't been as, you know, proactively responsive as you. If you ever have like negative press or something like that, where, you know, it's a time for your company to be able to speak and, Mm. you know, say your part or your side or something like that, that is a branding exercise. So how you... I'm very good at that. (laughs) You are. You've had (laughs) a bit of practice. (laughs) As soon as um, someone fucks up, I'm on camera, I'm like, hey guys, we fucked up. I'm so sorry. ABC. So one thing for us that's just, um, you know, become something that we've looked internally at is people write reviews if usually they're unhappy. Like not many people will go out on a limb and, you know, um, boast about yeah, your Yeah, it takes so time, eh, yeah, to write a do- review. it does. So you've got to be a bit cranky. Or a fucking um, loser. Yeah, you've got to be a bit cranky or, you know, have your, your feathers ruffled to be able to go out on a limb and, like, write a paragraph about how much you hate, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, I'm in a really emotional space, so body transformations, nutrition, oh. diet. I didn't think of that. Yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of people who think they know better. We're highly confident in what we do, but then you will have someone that will always tell you, my body doesn't respond on X amount of calories, and it's like it's a science-based deficit, you know? So it's a very very emotional jigsaw that we often deal with.
deal with. So on the flip and it's dieting as well. Like you get <laughs> angry when you're dieting too. Yeah, so if you're not getting know, results, it's, it's yeah, it's it's an emotion. It's very emotionally heated. So off the back end of that, sometimes we get some you know sour product reviews, and I'm cool with that. But the the thing that um, is important for our company is to then you know respond, respond, and um and what we do is we reach out to them individually and sort of just like look. A That's a nice bit, touch. Yeah, That's look nice a little touch. bit deeper into their journey. What went wrong? Was it really us? Could we learn from the experience? Or is it things going on at home or in a life? Highly likely. Yeah. It's usually down to the customer, but even just a grace of like a two weeks free or something like that yeah. can often work really well. How you respond to that and then also how you build for a better um, counteractive process to that as well is super important. So we'll get like better customer reviews. Yeah, on that's smart. Thing. And yeah. like say for e-commerce, for example, like we, we pretty much refund everyone or yeah. give them and like we talk about lifetime value of a customer is really yeah. important. Like a lot of e-commerce brands won't do it at the start because yep. they feel like they're losing money, but you'd rather lose your money up front and then have that customer come back the next drop and buy yeah. something as well. So um, that's like slightly different things, but kind of similar, like trying yeah. to keep that un- unhappy customer happy. We could probably do a whole nother um we got some party on customer service. Jesus. We're getting we'll probably had our for fair that. share. Stay away from that. <laughs> yeah, uh, going to market. Uh, let's talk about organic. Yeah. Yeah. That's my favorite. You like organic? That's my favorite. It's cheaper. Give, give me no money and <laughs> let's make some shit happen. That's what I like. Um, what's your favorite type of organic marketing? Uh, influencers, I would say. And when I say influencers, I don't necessarily mean people that, you know, do hashtag ad or get sponsored for every second post that they do. I mean people that that have a voice and others listen to. You know, some of my favourite people to work with have been like my mummy bloggers and stuff mm. like that that are just really authentic. Uh, Pippi would said to me one time, I go, like, I kind of just said, what's it like being an influencer? And she, like, sort of snapped. She goes, I'm not an influencer, but I do have influence. Yes, there's I'll a difference. Yeah, it's so true. And, um, like, I've always remembered that as yeah. well. So. Yeah, there's, there's a massive difference because when you – influencers, like, they've got a new favourite brand every single yeah. day. And I think there's a trained audience on Instagram now where they understand where they're being sold to. Yeah, and I've, everyone puts the hashtag ad on there now yeah, as well. Yeah, I've filtered through that, you know. Like, sometimes, you know, we've had opportunities to collaborate with people that have got hundreds of thousands of followers. But, like, they might have preached a keto dieting message back in 20. 20 that I remember and I'm like mm. oh, you know that doesn't really work and align with us to be able to work with them so it's kind of draws back on what you said before sometimes it's you know it's up to you as a founder to sacrifice potential you know money for for brand. just a brand um, yeah. or brand genuinism sort of uh, what is UGC I don't know user generated content oh <laughs> that's right <laughs> is um, it your notes I was like what no, I know um yeah, no user-generated content. That's been huge for my company because um, I oh, – we'll go into this later, but we've built a community much like you mm. and they speak for us a lot of the time. So um, It makes them feel, feel good. Obviously, you guys are in a results base, but, like, we're a brand and we're, like, I don't see us as a fashion brand, but people see us. And a lot of the times that people post our stuff, like – no, a lot of fashion brands wouldn't repost them. I'd consider you a fashion brand. I was looking pretty spunky in my purple Barney <laughs> jumper the other day. I, I say we're lifestyle. <laughs> we're more lifestyle. But like, say for example, someone like Nike, they wouldn't make above XL clothes because they yeah. wouldn't want like fat people to be rocking their yeah. stuff, which is quite sad. Yeah, it is. But I feel like on that front as well, anything that has like, you know, um, people um, representing the brand behind it, <laughs> times are changing with that as well. Yeah. You know, even for us, you know, we've even in our marketing um, content and whatnot, we've started to put more diverse females um, um, just for the mere reason that, like, we service everyone. Mm. So, like, why should we be, you know, focusing on these, like, you know, ripped abs and all that kind of stuff? Like, that's that's not really our everyday person. Yeah, so it's tacky as shit it, anyway. It is. Yeah. So, yeah, you do have to have a consideration for everyone. And I think the best representation of that is user-generated content because you've got, like, you know, people from here and there and everywhere mm. – Speaking about your brand, my favourite uh, content that um, Equolution um, generates is people getting behind the camera saying, like, I just got my diet plan for this week. It's got a bacon and egg muffin for breakfast and it's got an ice cream for dessert and I'm down 1.5 kilos this week. I can't bloody believe it. Yeah. And that is the best content that I could ever ask for for my company, I reckon. Um, in terms of user-generated content, like, if it's, like, a vibey – and the way I see it is, like, if you've gone to work, worked hard, paid off all your bills – and you got disposable income to spend $110 on our hoodies. Yeah. Like, who the fuck am I to say, like, you don't deserve to be on our page? Like, oh, that's how sure. I see it. For sure. I, you know what? In my whole business journey as, like, a founder, I've looked at some content at times and got highly emotional because mm. I think in that sort of capacity as well, I'm just like, you believe in what I 
gave up my existence for. You know, like yeah, that, you cool. literally cool. back me and I love that. Yeah. And um, one of the best ones I've ever seen, and I always talk about this a lot on the podcast, like there was a girl, she got like a black white ATR, pretty much the same as this. Um, Aren't yeah, they like, like extinct? Are they like... <laughs> <laughs> it was like a year ago, but I remember like um, she got it for her birthday and she was like crying. Oh, oh bless. Like going like that. Bless. And we've obviously got like a Dusty. lot deeper like um, messages about suicide. Yep. Um, Corey got a pretty crazy one not too long ago where... Um, obviously someone like passed away and they made sure he was wearing like YKTR when they got buried. Like, oh, yeah. I, just, I, just go, I literally just go Google. <laughs> yeah. So like in terms of user generated content, there is a marketing side to it, but there's yeah. also like that fucking soul satisfying. Emotional. I feel good. Doing. And I think if you have a brand that can extract, you know, emotion and mm. it can, um, you know, speak with soul, go for it. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's really important because there's so many companies out there and there's so many founders out there as well that just like don't really stand for much. Mm. And I mean like some people are mechanical in their ma- in their genetic makeup. Like they can get up and go to work every day and just like not feel anything. Yeah. But if you've got the opportunity to like positively impact as well as a brand and as a company, go go for it. And ultimately it contributes to your brand. Yeah. And like the, obviously with those types of things, like we'll talk uh, – like there's a great way – we're talking about organic now, but you can actually use user-generated content to um, like market with paid yeah. behind it, yeah, which is yeah. a good strategy. And obviously like those types of things would, would work in terms of sales, but you just don't really like – I'm yeah. just like, oh, that just made me feel good. Let me just do these other things as well. What's the um, – what's one of the best marketing campaigns you've seen? Um, but our, 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 best, our best marketing works off the back of comedy – yeah. Or humor. So, like, we used to do this thing. Like, we had these, um, we had these denim jackets, and they yep. had like a bit of fluff on them. Like, yep. everyone had one. And the kind of the theme was like not the fake YKTR. Oh, so because every brand was rocking yeah, it. Yeah. So we 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 built a campaign in and around that, and like our ROAS was like stupid. Like yep. I'm talking like maybe a couple hundred. Do like you two hundred x before you post anything? Like, well, I I mean anything. Do you think about like the psychology behind it, or do you just? Like, I don't. I don't are know. Are you the, habitual now and just yeah, go for it? I'm, I think I'm more like I know there's like marketing like tactics and stuff yeah. to use, and I've never really read on read on yeah. them. But like uh, I I think understanding like who your market is and mm. our demographic, I know what works for us. Do and humor humor always works. Someone once told me this: if you can make a girl laugh, you can make it do anything on um, a night out. Which is, is that true? Somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> so like, and Just then throw a few wines in there, yeah. and who knows? Bob's your uncle. <laughs> <laughs> and the other side of it is like, if you make people laugh, if you can make them feel good, they're probably going to support you because yeah. when they rock that hoodie for us, it's like, oh, this, these are the guys that make me laugh. And I understand content as either entertainment or education, and I try to cater to both. Do you know what? On that note, too, when you do put things out there, or when you do engage with your customers, like listen to what they have to say, down to you know a very last like feedback form or. Something something like mm. that because the moment you ask what did you love about Equolution and they tell you and you've got 20 other people telling you the same thing you've got a whole new marketing message that yeah. will likely appeal to another 20 40 60 you know what I mean you're like this so obviously you've seen the Shark Tank episode that we done with the boys last night yeah um, they have to it. That, yeah, you should have been in it because you would have been. I know. Girl, um. I was actually. I had so. Many, I had lots of questions. I think they got <laughs> off easy. And many um, more questions. We'll definitely do more of that content. Yeah. But one of the things was like they got to design T-shirts, but I'm actually going to design a T-shirt off the base based off the back of comments mm-hmm. um, that were in there. That was cool. the most common comment. Love it. Um, use those comments as the marketing campaign, put it onto a t shirt, yeah. and sell it through there as well. Yeah, so, I do love that. So, and that's sort of based off what you were just talking about just then. But yeah. I'll just do it like subconsciously. Oh, like, oh fuck, this is going to work for us. Let me do it. Marketing's really domino as well. So, like, you can kill a million birds with like one stone if mm. you just have a really thought out marketing strategy so even so i would call that say a campaign right and on the back end of that campaign you could do a giveaway where you then take the people that have commented and say you know reshare mm. um this post and if you've commented on the youtube channel as well then you could potentially feature and also win a free shirt for you and a mate so yeah tag, you yeah. know all that kind of stuff yeah um and all that stuff really works really well it does work really um, well think about free like when you, whenever you say free, you kind of get those like, I want to say like they're wasted customers, but. Well, I always say things like gift because I feel like when you give someone like something for free mm. um, and you, you know, you sort of market it as like a gift, you look like you're a company for the people. Yeah. And I think there's something really nice about giving someone a taste test 
um, in a in a in sort of like an environment where they haven't had to sort of fork out any money or whatnot because they're likely going to be a re- repeat customer and they're likely going to speak really highly of your brand. Yeah. So all those little things kind of like they they stack up. You got to kind of think of marketing. It's only, it's only like a one word switch up too, isn't it? Yeah. For a free to gift. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you got to cool. think about like those sorts of um, words as well. Like I remember when we first came out into the market, we didn't like saying the word diet. Mm. So we use it a little what, bit. What would you say instead um, of diet? So we would say things like nutrition plan or body transformation plan or something like that yeah um, is that just because diet's got a negative connotation negative towards? connotation yeah. yeah and um one thing we would never do is use the word like fat or skinny or anything like that um what do you say like plump so um we say we we'll just stay right away we from just it. like stay really away from it it's like it, we will do things like um rhetorical questions like if you're not feeling your best at the moment or your pants are feeling a little bit tighter and etc etc rather mm. than like if you're fuck fat. if you're feeling fat <laughs> yeah. if you're fat as mud you know yeah like you just have to be and and that's a lot about understanding your your space as well and Mm. sort of knowing what is sensitive and what you know upsets people and what is culturally acceptable to actually on that note um two things that we changed in our last rebrand is we used to say Equolution tribe so we used to refer to our community as Equolution tribe Mm. and we've just rebranded um quite recently and changed it to community because tribe alludes to like um sort of like culturally appropriated like Oh, really? And stuff like that, like yeah. Native Americans and things like that. So we had to be quite careful. Another thing we had to change, and we sort of just use it sparingly now. And if we go international and start to push in America, we'll change this slogan altogether. But 80% whole food and 20% soul food. Soul food actually alludes to like yeah. soul food, like yeah. it's like a cultural thing. Like, yeah, best. Like Fried chicken and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So you've got to kind of be careful about terms and stuff also. Mm. It's a weird world we live in now. Eh? You I know. You've got to be just, very careful. Yeah. Yeah. Paid ads, we obviously done organic, UGC, um, partnerships as well, but pay content. Yeah, so I kind of touched on this in our last potties together where I was talking about kind of like investing as you grow. Like don't think that you yeah, have to agree. throw down like so much money and cross your fingers for a return on investment. Like mm. just progressively invest as you accumulate revenue. So double down organic, is that kind of what you're saying I think for now? So, I think so. Double, I, I would focus on organic first and foremost. Um, and then as you sort of grow, put your money into paid. The thing is with paid is there are some really good ROIs on paid strategies where you might like 10x your email investment (laughs) something like that but for the most part like you don't really get a lot back for your investment it's more just like it accumulates audiences it um you know like it leads like a domino effect and and whatnot um yeah like sort of that pay like you said so those sort of strategies you can use before is like like say you give away the full collection we used to do this at the start Mm. like give away our full collection um all you got to do is give us your email and then put ad spend behind it and we've got emails off the back of that we used to do stuff like that but yeah i kind of agree sort of focusing on on the content and saying that like we've built our business off the back of facebook ads as well i would say as well we've had a great success with Facebook ads and mm. um, and and Facebook ads isn't like um, like if you started a business and then say like Jackson who's someone kind of new into this yeah. sort of um, soft Shopify space if he just started spending ads willy nilly like you'd lose your money you want to get the row ads because you, you haven't done in, the other side of it yeah and you need to spend it in the right way too like you need to target correctly you need to have the ads like formatted correctly yeah your cre- your creative has to be good your copy has yeah. to be good your targeting has to be good and you have to spend in enough money on it so people might just go oh I'm gonna spend a hundred bucks a day on Facebook ads but but the rest of it's shit. Yeah, I do all the um, Facebook ads and oh dear, you yeah, I used I to, love, I used to, I love it, I absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah. it's it's, one of it's cool seeing like it work too. Yeah, so, yeah. How often do you look at your Facebook ads? Um, we have rotating ads weekly, mm. and then we'll add to those on a weekly basis as well. So, what do, what do you measure anything else besides ROAS or yeah, is so ROAS everything? We we usually just look at like how they performed and the context of the particular ad because yeah. if we find a, a message is is selling really well, then we'll keep sort of churning out different variations of that message Mm. like one thing that went really well is we had like a birthday cake and like it was we were like pulling out a slice and it was like you can have the cake Mm. and so the the click-through rate was really high and sort of we take note of those things and I think as we grow as a company we'll look we, we sort of are starting to look towards the data trends a lot more. Yep. Whereas at the start, it's just kind of like, oh, that worked. Oh, yeah. that worked, you yeah. know. And it kind of happens like that early it on. Does, because yeah. it's like, you're new, you're exciting, you're kind of that brand and yeah. kind of row as it happens off the back of it. Yeah. If you don't know what row as is, kind of returned on ad spend. Yeah. So say if it's like 10x, I put $100 on, I'm going to get a thousand bucks from it. But once you, once you get it sorted. You can crack the code. If you can crack the code, it's like fucking 
putting money into an ATM and spitting money back Literally, out. Literally, it's like, shit, baby. It's you like, can watch those numbers just like, whoo. Yeah. And also, too, like, everything kind of goes hand in hand. Like, if you're directing people or enticing people to sign up for, say, your um, newsletter list or something like that, where you can keep in touch with them on a weekly basis, then you can put them in your remarketing um, list, too. So mm. then not only are they receiving your content from a newsletter basis, but then they're, they're, then they're also seeing, like, all your ads and everything on Facebook and they're seeing you so many times in a day that they're bound to convert at one point as well let's go a little bit high um a little bit deeper here uh i said like a funnel like let's talk do you, do you say cold warm hot is that what you say I, or do you do, say top um, middle bottom top middle bottom same same thing so like top of funnel so we, we'd sp- like when we get going we spend like 80 percent of our money on top of funnel yeah so top of funnel is the eyes that aren't really familiar with your brand that you kind of have to introduce yourself so think of um Think of Top of Funnel as like a, a new acquaintance that you're meeting at a bar. Mm. Like if you could straight off the bat, like, hi, I'm Jade. I live in Coogee. I run a business. I this. Like what would you say initially to introduce yourself? What do you want them to walk away from that bar and remember you for mm. type thing? That's that's, good. that's how you could probably market. As middle? A, middle? Middle Funnel is Middle like, or warm? People call them. Middle the Funnel other. is like maybe they've slid into your DMs before. <laughs> like, I know who you are or I know you through a friend. I know you and they've like, you probably know that you're on their radar and then you can reaffirm, oh yeah, I do yes that's me i have that business and and whatnot so and bottom just, of the funnel is like you're ready to close eh? you're reminding them and then bottom of the funnel is like you're letting them know that they need you mm. so yeah so like when you talk about marketing in terms of different parts of like this so what what businesses actually do so say we spend 80 percent of our money trying to get people into our funnel um the middle part and they've considered buying them but mm. haven't quite done it it might be for a few reasons price is too high shipping's too high or a, don't like your product you can actually create market um marketing campaigns to target, target them. and you can put the copy in there like hey here's a discount code for yeah. you here's free shipping so the theory is at some point everyone falls to the bottom Boy, right yeah. so you they're aware of you they're reminded of you and then they they understand they need you and they're ready to convert mm. um i think for like a company that has like probably in your space and you have inventory and whatnot, the remarketing campaigns, are they the most effective? And like there's a thing called DPA, which is dynamic product ads. Do you know what they are? No. No. So what a DPA is, you kind of just set it up and what it does, it's kind of like, you know, like those. Oh, I do know what it is. I used to do this at at Google. Yeah, this is the best. Love that. So it's kind of like, if you jump online and you see this hoodie, but you haven't bought it yet, you've added it to cart, this hoodie would follow you around. So you look at an article, you're just going to see this hoodie, you're going to see this Ladies, if you've ever designed a handbag bag research on Farfetch and whatnot, that shit will follow you until you drop the 2K. That's what a a DPA (laughs) is. So like even, and we only spend five to 10% of our marketing budget on that, but that's where you make your most money in terms of e-commerce. So it's really good, good tactic. And and you know what, like I know this sounds like a lot to take in, especially if you, if, a lot of people watching thinking like I'd really like to start a business or I'm only new to this or whatnot but as you go you really accumulate a lot of knowledge, knowledge and yeah. it's and it's about learning your platforms and learning you know what what works for you because what might work for you guys might not necessarily work as well for us etc cetera, etc cetera. product versus service though is very different isn't it yeah it, it is yeah. it is yeah um, one one app that we use we used to use back in the day is called shoelace on um, Shopify so jump into Shopify shoelace and they build out all the DPAs mm, for you bottom yeah. of the funnel stuff so Fucking is good. tip of doom, tip of yeah, doom. Yeah, tip of doom. Uh, let's talk about platforms. Facebook, how would you use Facebook? Um, Facebook I'd use for a couple of reasons. I would uh, create an in Facebook community. So we have a we have an Equolution community mm. and that's part of the service in that you get exclusive access and that's where, you know... I'll what do you get for exclusive access? Well, it's, it's more just like the community kind of banding together, giving each other motivation. That's like the really... That's the emotional core of the mm. actual community. Um, as like one of the founders, I always jump in there. I try and jump in like a couple of times a week and give like the tip of doom. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, just like, just show my face yeah. and, and, and let them know that... Yeah, let them know the they've got cheerleaders. Yep. Yeah, and it's also an opportunity as well for your team to showcase their expertise so for us like we have the girls jump in there every now and again and and answer questions you know give a little bit of light in terms of like education and whatnot too i think those community pages are the really big part so we've got a scope spunners club that does really really well yeah. off the back of it and you actually create community and like he'll he only write maybe one article a week yeah. or a tip a week and everyone seems to froth it so yeah. i think community base um a lot of people set up business pages and try and put their instagram content onto that and they realize that it only gets pushed out to one percent Yep. of the actual followers because it's fucking Facebook. You're meant to be paying for that kind of attention. And so be, people use it the wrong way. Yeah, and to be honest, if you're not putting effort into your content, the 
the user and the eyes on the other end, they they see it. They sm- sniff it from a mile away. Like um, it's, it's I, f- I feel like they're more inclined to watch long form there or read long form type of blogs. Probably more Cause so because Instagram we, people say to me they don't even read the captions. No. Nah. <laughs> Great. I just spend like hours writing them. But yeah. yeah. Um, so we what we used to do really early on, so we used to put our vlogs on there, which is like mm. top of funnel marketing for us. And we used to put um, broad audiences behind that and then retarget with the stuff that we're actually wearing in vlogs. Yep. So that was a tactic That's we good. used to use pretty early on. And we're going to be more aggressive with that. So if you watch us, like say we're dropping, like um, if you watched Ten and the Ken last night, all the boys are wearing hoodies. They'll follow you. <laughs> <laughs> all the boys were wearing hoodies that we're going to be dropping yeah, next yeah. week. Just subtle shit like that. So yeah. it's like a friend of mine. It's actually 20 touch points before someone will buy for you now. So yeah. pretty interesting. Oh, is it? Yeah, for e-commerce. It's more than it used to be. Hey? Yeah, I think it was like 10 or 11 yeah. in 2011. Yeah. So going up every year. Yeah. Um, it's just, that's competitive space, isn't it? Mm. Like, just getting more competitive. And we do it subconsciously. We might put a watermark that says YKTR yeah. down the bottom. So Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, Instagram? Um, Instagram has been my absolute best friend. So what we did and our strategy behind Instagram was use it as a tool to showcase that we, I guess, have a, an edge of expertise mm. and then create that trust and create so that... more real, educational? Yeah, create the relationship and then use, like, the, the um, super engaged um, audiences, like the ones that watch your story and whatnot to be able to, like, showcase that the more the internal stuff. Where do you see the feeds versus stories? You say, where do you, how, do you, how do you feel about both? Um, Is one more important than the other to you at the moment or what? I... You know what? I... I think the feed is like the point where people are like, oh, that company and that post and that looks exciting. But then I think the story is the ones that are like, you could almost consider them as like middle of funnel. Mm. Like they're the ones that are like eyeing you off and like having a little stalk. Think about like, think about if you dig a bird, right? If you're into a girl, you are less likely to like just skim over her content. You're probably more so going to be engaged with it. Warm audience. <laughs> Middle of funnel. <laughs> Middle of funnel. Like what, you'll watch her story. You probably like, like... When we go out now, like... Oh, yeah, uh, Top of funnel. Middle of the funnel. I know. Yeah, literally. Do you like her? Yeah, middle of the funnel. Might follow her friends, like all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Which and that, and that happens with us as well. Like if someone's engaged with Equolution, they'll watch our stories, they'll follow like companies that we um, promote, like um, body science, better pasta, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Like Here's a question. When you jump on your phone on Instagram, do you go through stories first or feeds? I go through stories. I don't even watch – I really yeah. do look so through feeds. I, I started noticing that um, probably a couple of months ago. And I'm like, mm. shit, I'm going to focus more on stories for us. My feed's hilarious now. Do you know who it is? Like you, Simi, Corey, Chico. <laughs> it's like – the YKTR <laughs> algorithm <laughs> flying. Oh, the algorithm of doom. <laughs> yeah. Fuck, plenty of content coming your way. <laughs> but like um that's sort of one thing I noticed personally. So like um I I see I see um stories as a great way to brand. Yeah, and, I think and so commu- too. you touch touch on community. community. Um that's and like well, I do a lots of Q and A's. I yep. feel like that's really community based. I so, think so too. Yeah. And one thing that I noticed that you do, which I've started to do as well, is like kind of um profile as like business jade and like an extension of equolution and then yeah. you've got equolution which is like it speaks for itself so just giving those different personalities to the different dimensions of your brand you yeah know? that makes sense google yeah. i got no this is going to be all you yeah well i, I think google i've um, never used adwords or anything like that so I, there's seo and sem so seo is the organic search so if you type something like how to lose weight mm. Good SEO will have equilibrium show top. up. Yeah. But all of this is based on an algorithm. So what you need to do is like optimize your website to be able to like fit into the algorithm requirements that kind of like push there's, you. There's a couple there. of legal things you can, you can't really do, eh? Can, yes, yeah. that's correct. So like you can't just put random words on your website because it's performing well in your space if they're not relevant to your yeah. to your brand. So So back in the day they used to put, put like say diet was the keyword, they used to put diet in like white. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. White writing. Yeah, and also um <laughs> some some competitors like this is in the AdWords space, so this is like SEM, so that's paid um, mm. Google Ads. Um, some people even bid on like competitors keywords. So like we um, searched Equolution the other day, and we were like looking because we've only really just started to fancy that. Like I've come from Google, and I've only just that's started. Weird. Looking. That's weird. I know weird. it's because organics work so well. That's yeah, why. True. Yeah. So we've only just started investing in, in Google AdWords and whatnot, and we were <laughs> typing the other day, and we were seeing like all these competitors bidding on Equolution. I was like, Wait, how much? How much is Equolution going for? for I, the, uh, um, I don't know the actual like dollar value. Pri- the click through um, price, but yeah. yeah, it wouldn't be. Dieting is pretty competitive. So, so explain Google AdWords to someone that's never heard of it. 
Google AdWords is, so basically when you do a Google search, AdWords is those paid ads that literally say ad that mm. appear in like um, sort of ranked format at the top of the page. Yeah. So the, the psychology is that you usually look to those first. So you'll look at them and sometimes people allude that to reputability. So they'll have like the top of the, the, um, the, top of the, chart, the charts one will be like what they will consider the first and foremost, like yeah. that's your go-to. Because how often you, does anyone go to the second page of Google? Eh? Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it's like when you type, say something like, I don't know, clothing or whatnot, you'll see like the iconic first yeah. or whatnot. And like that's where... And they're paying to be in that spot. And there. they're paying to be there. But then they also have the like the brand stamina behind them where people are like, oh yeah, 100%, like the iconic yeah. is my... You know what I mean? So... Um, Apparently they don't make too much, like they're good top... Apparently they make too much money, yeah. Do you know how they started? It is the coolest idea. You know how they deliver to you in like three hours? Yeah. So basically, um, the not is how it, they is that, is, that how, is that how quick they deliver? I actually didn't know that. Yeah, they, they can deliver in, in three hours. So apparently they had this customer that was in like Surrey Hills or something where their offices were and she made an order and then um, she placed it and they were like, oh, well, we're here anyway. And, mm. they, and the order came through and they went and took it to her and she said, uh, my mind is blown. Like, this is amazing. And then so they capitalised on the like the small delivery window. Shit. Just cool. See, guys, listening to the customers. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so let's talk about optimising user experience. Yeah. Very important. Obviously, look, marketing, we've talked about marketing and a few different things, but if, you, if you've if got an influx of um, customers and they come to a fucking shit website, it's mm. probably going to sink your business quicker, isn't it? Yeah, so you have to really consider the customer journey when you're considering branding and marketing as well because not only will a good customer experience likely lead to a conversion – but they also it also gives you different opportunities to drop marketing messages in there based on where they are in their life cycle. Mm. So if someone just, I guess, um, comes to your website but they don't purchase or anything like that, then you can build out a whole um, marketing campaign where like they fall into like a newsletter list and like, you know, they receive an email at Christmas after Easter when they're feeling a bit sluggish mm. or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's cool. You, so you, can, you sort of have to understand – a, your customer and B, their li- their potential life cycle yep. to be able to sort of script good marketing around them. Even your, even your current clients, like we find, so we're, we're building out um, a new customer journey at the moment and like we're integrating all these touch points even at like um, week four and whatnot because we think that's where dieting fatigue occurs and we want to like sort of touch base and just make sure they're okay and they're enjoying their journey and, mm. and whatnot. So it's really important to understand the customer journey and good customer experience when you are building out for the purpose of building out your marketing. Of course. And like we're like a guys and we, our demographics probably more knockabout. So they don't really want to like jump on and read our brand story and yep. sort of stuff like that. You just, for us, we just want to throw the clothes in front of them as yeah. quick as possible. Yeah. <laughs> and Definitely. it's like get clothes, check out later. Like, yeah. You know I, mean? I don't want to be too many pages too deep and upsells and stuff like that. Cause man, you know, guys and paperwork, we don't yeah, really do that shit too yeah, well. Yeah, it's so true. So that's like, I guess it goes back to understanding your target market too. Mm. Yeah, very mm. much so. All so right. I think customer journey is super important. Uh, website, we've sort of touched on that a little bit. Yeah, you, you talked website. about like time on app. That was what something they measure in your space. Is, did you say that or no? Nah? Am I making that up? Yeah, yeah. So when we were talking about sort of like how – um, I guess like an investor or someone valuing the value of your business mm. would consider it val- highly valuable is um, for us in the app space is like how much time people spend on your app and like as a user and sort of like how they engage with it and all their touch points and all that kind of stuff, which mm. is all, I guess, more opportunities to be able to integrate your message and speak to them like – Ultimately, as a brand, like you want to be sticky. So you want to always ask yourself, like, how can I be sticky? And I know that that sounds like something that's really exclusive. To that's kind of a marketing term that I don't know everyone would understand. Can you explain that? It, a bit it means more? it means something that like hangs around. It's contagious. You go back for more, like that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, um, think about like a really good burger at a burger joint. You're probably not going to just have one burger and never go back there again. Mm. You probably keep going back there and enjoying the burger. And then, you know, when it comes to your birthday and your mum says, what do you want for your birthday? And you're like, I'm going to have that hectic burger. You know what I mean? So that's stickiness. Where's this burger joint you're talking about? I don't know. <laughs> just, I just, just got hungry. Yeah, I, like I just burger, started visiting. Burger. Paul's hamburgers in Sylvania Waters is mint. That's really? Probably, yeah, it's one of my favourites. Mm, yeah. Cool. All right, I'll jump into a sort of Q&A segment off the back of that. Anything else you want to touch on? Off th- um, not really. That's sort of – oh, community. Oh, keen. Oh, keen to talk about this one. <laughs> yeah. That was on our list. Yeah. Um, we've both done sort of, I, I think, a good job at creating a community around oh, our course. brand. And we've got I, people speaking like us. Exactly. And That's for important. us, yeah. yeah. 
So I think that's an important marketing strategy as well. It's like... How do you create community? Well, you say it really well. You guys always go, I've got to give the people what the people want. <laughs> I, think that's a really, I think that's a really good way to create a community because, you know, on the receiver's end, they know that you're listening to them. So a lot of people, like, early on, they're like, they say this as well. One of the things I say, like, fucking reply to people. Reply Probably to people, yeah. Like, like their comment. Unite them on a common denominator as well. So one thing that we encourage people to do when they first join Air Coalition is create their own health and fitness journey Instagram account mm. so that's just for the pure reason that like a lot of people don't like doing it on their private ones you know we've got school teachers and mums and whatnot and they just like creating an alias where they can like share and mm. then other people connect it's so like a journaling thing eh? so it is can, yeah, yeah that's cool that's yeah. cool yeah yeah, good so for UGC too yeah <laughs> seriously <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we we even did this other thing as well where we created a page called um, Equilution Templates and we actually made templates and oh, people would post cool. their yeah. stories. We did gratefuls, like, yeah, yeah list, list of gratefuls. Using our, using our content. Yeah, like, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so communities are super important. Obviously, like, we create a fuckload of content and we mm. want them sort of to be speaking about us and obviously a lot of them speak about us and then that kind of just drives you down yep. the funnel into purchasing merch. And do you know And what? even if they don't like your merch, I get plenty of people go like, I'll never buy any of your clothes, but like I'll come over and get a kick out of your content. Yeah. That and that's a win, that's a win. It is. I was actually just about to say that because you know what? Like at the end of the day, as important as branding and marketing is, like if you've – signed on the dotted line and you're committed to this business you've mm. got to love what you do mm. and one of the best ways to love what you do as a founder is to create things that people love whether that be content content whether that be product whether that be good service like you have an opportunity when you're creating this brand profile to sort of like commit yourself to be able to in the process create things that people love mm. and i think that's that's what gets you up every day you mm. know like I love writing ads. I love seeing other people's content. I love resharing it. I love, you know, talking back to our clients, you know, and that's all part of the branding exercise. And I always find those messages come through at just the right time. You're yeah. like sometimes like, oh, I can't be fucked. And then ding, yep. ding, like yep. this DM comes, thanks for inspiring me. All it's this so true. Shit. It's cool. All right, let's jump in the Q&A part. Cool. Jade, first for you, marketing budget, percentage ratio of free value to trying to close. Well, I always say that if you're, if you're going on the – front end of like giving free content to try and convert don't do too much that you deter from the actual like product or service so for us for example we wouldn't give too much dieting information where they don't have to join to find out the rest like mm. you know um i would do it in a way that like you're creating an initial point of trust and then you're investing money but don't be investing more than what it costs you to acquire that that client or service that client. Uh, percentage? Or, or what does that look like? Is that 80-20 or? I don't know. Yeah. I honestly, I, I just don't like, I don't have rules of thumb with that sort of stuff. We When we assess how much money we should put into XYZ channels, we just understand what it costs us to service the client. Yeah. And then we understand the margin that we then have to play with. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a really understanding like your overheads, understanding what your cost of service is and like, yeah, just marketing around that. Yeah, I'm a little bit different. I'm more so like we give You're fucking... You're a numbers man, aren't you? No, nah, we, like, we just give a fuckload of free content away. I think yeah. that's your point of entry these days whenever anyone can start a business, especially yeah. in our space. Not not hard to fucking put YKTR on a hoodie, you know what yeah. I mean? So uh, we give a lot away, but in saying that, we're going to move towards um, pay content pretty soon because I feel yeah. like we do it pretty well. So... I think initially early, like all your content should be free. Are they asking like wh how much should be free yeah, it depends out there what the and then how much should you pay for? Yeah. Mm, that's a hard one. I don't know. I, I honestly would say it's more not so much the split, but rather the point in the business that you're at. And what kind so of business What kind of business is it as well? You know what I mean? Like yeah. a, a service base is a lot different. Service base is really different because you're you, paying for advice. Yeah, exactly. Where we, you, Like for us, we give all our content away for free, but there's something you got to buy at the bottom of it yeah. or you could buy potentially. Yeah. So and tough you, question, tough question. And you don't also – like you have to be a bit strategic in the sense that like this is why I don't want to like put percentages and – timelines and stuff on it because it's a, it's a really intuitive gauge I think mm. but like you don't want to be the free content guy and forget that you have merch to sell to mm. do you know what I mean like there is like a balance I think you guys do it really really well um but there's a lot of considerations it's very contextual based on the business so basically we don't know <laughs> don't know <laughs> fair enough all right uh, next question next question marketing budget of less than 5k where should I prioritize spending it uh, that's interesting. I would definitely, put, if you want your product in 
front of more eyes, you have to put it in more hands. So I would be investing that 5K in if you've got like stock or like inventory or something like that. Like if I was you guys, I'd be just getting 5K worth of actual merch and I'd just be shooting it out to all your good contents, your footy boys, you that's, yeah, that's good. Your, people yeah. in music industry, all that kind of stuff. I think that's the best way because whether they're on their Instagram or walking on the streets, they're representing your brand through a gift, yeah. you know? Yeah, I, I actually really agree with that. Like you use the 5K of like merch and that's a, you could actually write it off as well, like yeah. into influencers and put it in, in the right hands. But then I'll actually be a bit more strategic with it as well. So say you've got like um, 20 hoodies to give away, um, I'd be giving 20 to people under 5K, 20 under 10, yeah, like, you know sure. what I mean? And then like... Diverse groups. Especially when you're well. early on and you go, hey, I'm just a new brand. Like yeah. you don't have to, but I would really appreciate a I know, shout I out. I think that's, that's so effective. Oh, if someone done that to me, I'm like, yeah, fucking hell. Yeah. Like, what's a sure. shout out to me but then you'll get the high end influencers they're like oh, I get fucking paid for this yeah. fuck them off just focus on micro and then build out from there so like if you look at us we focus on lead community and kind of built out yeah. from there we're not that anymore but um, focus on maybe your hometown and build out from there yeah Definitely. And also as well, I think something that worked really well for us internally, and I don't know, you know, if that's worth allocating a budget to, it depends like, again, what sort of business you're in, but like referrals, like a referral program. Mm. So incentivizing those that speak highly of you and make that reference to someone else who then converts as a client. So, mm. um, you know. Is that like we're attached to discount code? Is that yeah, what you're Yeah, something like a about? discount code or like mention, you know, who referred you at the checkout and then you might give someone a discount for their next purchase or you might you know, gift them something, um, but that's sort of things that you can put your money towards. Actually, that's where you could go, like, super, like, a bit more um, technical is, like, say you give out all your merch away and you attach a discount code to them. In the back of Shopify, you can see which discount codes are actually working. Mm -hmm. So, say if I go, oh, yeah. Jay, can you give out YKTR? Here's your code, J20, 20% off, and I see you've given me 50 then that's when you know who to pay as an influencer. Use Jade 20 at the checkout of YKTR, you get 20% off, <laughs> and then I get a commission. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, Jade, how do I create a personal brand? Well, I have I sort of neglected it. I, um, I, I started Hang around me's made you cooler, eh? Oh, you said that on the weekend. We're, you know, it we is, over, it's true. We had a few drinks on the weekend, and I was like, you know I made you cooler. I was like, oh, I did have. you? <laughs> <laughs> I have. Um, no, I maybe I, just shined a bit of light on you. Yeah, no, nah, I, I think, well, that's the thing, right? I was, just, I was just about to say that if you wanted to create a personal brand, a lot of it comes down to first knowing who you are as a brand. So for me personally, like, I didn't really have – uh, I, I feel like I didn't have the confidence to talk about business the way that I do now. Mm. And so now I'm like Jade, the businesswoman type thing. But then I'm also like, I also practice what I preach. So I would never sort of like shy away from the fact that, you know, I'm very passionate, flexible dieter. And mm. um, that's sort of like a, an extension of my company and what I do. So I think how to create a personal brand is first define the personal brand. Like who are you? And then just start, you know, putting content out there that aligns with that brand. So for me personally, you know, I, I love doing this with you. I jump on my own podcast and I do podcasts and blogs. Um, I've written a book, so I'm now like technically an author. Yeah. And I like posting f um, health and fitness and food related things on my Instagram. So that's, that's cool. Me. Yeah. Um, mine's a little bit simpler. I just documented the journey while building something. And I wouldn't have had a personal brand when I first started YKTR. But now I've got like, I can point back at something and Jay yeah. can point back at Equilution. Um, you kind of got to have business. I feel like you got to have runs on the board. You do. It yeah. matters. It's, it's like the saying, like, you never trust a skinny shit, like, uh, Never trust a skinny share for yeah. like if a PT trying to tell you how to work out and he's out of shape, yeah. you're probably not going to do that. And in, in the business term of it, you need to be point back at something. Yeah. And I can point back at YKTR, YKTR Sport. You can point back at Equilution. Yeah. And I think by documenting the journey, people want to know. And even share your story. If you think your That's story, important. documenting is you, so important. Yeah. If you think your story puts you in the shoes of your customers, it's really important to share. Like for Amal and I, we had really bad relationships with food. We dieted um, really restrictively. We we're fitness models that just really wanted to look good but mm. also enjoy the food that we loved and like we we were our first clients so sharing that story is part of our personal brand but then it also gives credibility to Equolution as well yeah agree how important is building a good logo from the jump um i feel like basic logos are the best like, I, just I just i just had a consulting not really a consulting but i was trying to help out a couple of mates and um they've been in like clothing brand for like three four years and they don't have a core logo 
like, oh yeah, we're still deciding like what the fuck he's doing. Mm. Like it's like trying to drive past a Macca's and they all got different logos. It's like you yeah. know what a Macca's logo looks like? And I reckon if you top down like the biggest brands in the world and you looked at them, they're all pretty basic. Yeah, I think so. I think like the stickiness of going back to that word stickiness, like I think the stickiness of your brand is like a really holistic approach. Like I don't think it's just the logo or just the name or just the byline or or tagline or whatnot. I think it's the brand as a whole. Yeah. I mean, I invented it's a what, word. Like, yeah. equivolution is not even a word. And then people can't even pronounce it, let alone spell it. Like, that was a struggle. <laughs> it was back in the my, you know, less smarter days. Um, mm. But, yeah, so that's what we built off. But it's more like... What you, what you do, like, design your logo, design your... What you do after that is a lot more, more important, important than, yeah. than sitting there on... Trying so to pick a logo in four it? years. Not very really. Not really important, but what you do after it, like what did Google mean to most of us? What did Nike mean? But what they've yeah. been able to do off the back of that, yeah. it's been pretty cool. Do you know what Nike stands for? It's actually the goddess of victory in Greek mythology. You know, one of their That's cool. One of their campaigns is like my favorite ever campaign. They did this like um I can't remember what it was called, but they did kind of like a personal coaching service. Like, you know, they send like um, artificial intelligence messages and stuff like that. Like, you've scheduled a run for today. Come on, it's time to get up and all that kind of stuff. The campaign, if anyone can track that down, is like one of my favourite marketing campaigns ever. Would they have much of a marketing budget at Nike? <laughs> Maybe just small. <laughs> Kitties. They're doing organic. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, is starting a brand on Shopify a good place to start? Yes. Fucking, like, if you think about starting a clothing brand back in the day, you would have had to go into China, set up a physical store and hope people will come through. Yeah. It's a pretty good place to start. Yeah, I agree with that as well. And so easy. And, and understand your platform to know the tools that you can integrate as well to better the whole the customer experience and like also like capitalise on... Yeah, people don't know there's apps on there. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like having an iPhone and just using it to call people. It's really handy. <laughs> like I even started becoming with, familiar with the analytics, like the sales and oh, the website yeah, news and yeah, stuff yeah. like that through the Shopify tools. Cool. So, yeah. cool. yeah, good idea. Jade, when it comes to prospective partners, what are your non-negotiables? Like my life partner or my business partner? Business. Both. Go for it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> business. Um, prospective partners. Um, my non-negotiables are just like aligned vision. Like I really think you have to have the same vision. You can't have one partner that just wants to do it for fun and the other one that wants to create an empire. You know, I think every, I think both parties need to be on the same page um, and I think they um, need to be genuine and authentic in their wants and needs as well. Like Amal and I were always – like we're, we always say like throughout our whole business journey like – we were always good people. Like, you know, like we were just, we had that in common mm. um, and we wanted to, you know, serve our clients and we wanted to create a good product and a good service and all that kind of stuff. And I think the alignment there really worked for us. Yeah, I, th I agree with that too. Like if you get a, a partner who's sort of like motivated by money, they're more inclined to fuck you over to do something to get money. So, so it's understanding like people's values are really yeah. important. Um, I feel like every business partner I'll, I've had and will have probably – People like I would hang out with in ten years. Yeah, I think sure. like that. I think yeah. like that. I think that's. I think that's a good way to look at it. Um, in our last party, we did cover business partners. Yeah, and so working yeah. with friends and stuff. <laughs> uh, you guys, <laughs> you guys kind of touched on this at the start as well. But do you spend a lot of time on a brand's mission statement and then base your marketing off that? Uh, not really, because I think we both probably couldn't even announce our proper mission statements yeah properly. like mine's written down somewhere and if i had a be better memory i'd probably be able to rattle off like amal if amal was here she would like know it word for word <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um but yeah it's more so just to create that mutual understanding between your partners your team do you know what our one is what is it aspire change through clothing oh that's cool yeah it is that's really cool i yeah. like that i made it up too it's did cool. you yeah just take a little bit of street cred for that <laughs> <laughs> um last one here isaac when does marketing become annoying um, when you when it comes more about yourself than mm. uh, uh, yes. I think that's the simple answer for it. So true. Don't do not put yourself on a soapbox. Yeah. Um, and exhaust your audience because you want to don't care. Right? Yeah. Because <laughs> you want to toot your own horn, like and like say like I, I've said this all the time. Like our content's based off the back of like entertainment or education, and I only make content under this umbrella if it does one of those two things. Yeah. And like my best content is Q and A. So. Yeah. This is, what, this is what my best content You can is. show expertise and you can shed light on your brand without being, you know, tacky or mm. boastful or have attitude or conflict with, you know. There's like um, there's like a saying, like, if you get someone talking about themselves, they'll listen for hours. Mm. And you, if you can do that with your um, customer base, yeah. they'll love you forever. So true. Yeah. So is that true. it? All right, guys, that's a wrap on it. Um, who's your next podcast guest on your show? Um, I don't you getting your accountant and is he coming or no? Nah? 
Yeah, I might get him on there. I don't know yet. Yeah. You, probably you, knowing us. <laughs> <laughs> Q&A. All right, yeah. guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you. Bye.